pray pranam to all of you dear friends it is our innate nature to experience happiness love and joy because we are love incarnate divine love is inherent in the heart of every living being yet since we are caught in the clutches of maya we have forgotten our original identity that we are bliss personified and due to which we are afflicted with pains and griefs caused by maya with the depressions and suppressions caused by it our situation is similar to that of an individual who is carrying a revolver with himself for self defense but when a stranger meets him on the road and starts beating him up he simply forgets to remove the revolver because by merely showing the revolver to the man he will run away there is no need even to shoot him in the same way all of us are bliss personified but having forgotten our original identity that divine love is inherent in our hearts we are facing all the sorrows and miseries of maya therefore my dear friends it is very important for us to know where is the source of divine love because divine love is the only remedy for all the human sufferings so where is the source of divine love the almighty lord himself is an infinite ocean of divine love and true bliss if our heart is in connection with that infinite reservoir definitely we too shall be able to experience that divine love and bliss in our heart as a result of which we shall be untouched by maya all the blows that maya is giving to us we shall remain untouched by them therefore it is important for us to know and understand that how can we connect with that infinite ocean of bliss and divine love dear friends it is through the path of bhakti or what we call as devotion through which we also will be able to connect with that infinite ocean therefore it is important for us to understand what is the deep impact of bhakti in the transformation of our life but the first and foremost thing that we need to know is what is bhakti world renowned devotee bhakt narad ji who is the author of narad bhakti darshan has defined bhakti to be an extreme attachment to the divine friends all of us in the world have an attachment towards something or the other but a devotee's attachment is merely towards the divine himself because by all means he is devoted to the divine and that is why bhakt narad ji says that it is an extreme attachment because the attachment is not only through his mind but also through his words so also with his actions mansa vacha karmana to explain this narji has given a very simple but a beautiful example he has termed it as bhago bhakti friends we all are a part of the divine consciousness just as our hand is a part of our body what is the function of the hand it is to serve the body for example it picks up a bite of food and places it in the mouth it picks up a mug of water and it pours it upon the body in the same way the hand is serving the body the body too is providing it with all the necessary nourishment nutrition blood 
oxygen supply and everything that the hand requires to survive. The hand need not bother about the fact that how shall I subsist on my own? Because till it is attached with the body, it gets all its necessities. Now, the self-interest of the hand lay in service of the body. But what if the hand says that cut me off from the body, I shall no more be part of the body, I shall subsist on my own independently. Then in that case, will the hand be able to survive on its own? Of course, it will not be able to subsist on its own. Similarly, the consciousness within us is a part of the Supreme Divine's consciousness. The bliss, the divine love that we want to experience is attained only from that Supreme Consciousness. Therefore, just as the self-interest of the hand lay in service of the body, our self-interest lay in service of the Divine Lord, by which we shall attain the bliss from His infinite bliss reservoir. We shall attain the Divine Love from His infinite Divine Love reservoir, and by which we shall be able to lead our life untouched by Maya. Therefore, if we look around, Every one, each one of us is running after self-interest. But the one who realizes the fact that the self-interest of the soul lay in service of the divine, he becomes blessed. And now he starts his journey on the path of bhakti because it is only through bhakti that we shall be able to taste that bliss in our heart. But to what extent we shall be able to experience that bliss? It is to the extent of the devotion in us. Deeper our devotion and deeper is the experience of bliss. For a simple example, let us say we all listen to the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. However, if an individual listens to the pastimes, but he has no love, no adoration for the Supreme, he will be merely listening to the words, but there will not be any kind of bliss experience in the heart. But on the contrary, if a devotee who has devotion to an extent of 25% listens to those pastimes, he will be able to experience that bliss in the heart to the extent of 25%. Gradually, when his devotion becomes more and more deep, let us say, now he is listening to the past times with a devotion of say an extent 50%, then the experience of bliss in his heart is also to the extent of 50%. This is how, as the devotion becomes deeper and deeper, the experience of bliss in the heart too becomes deeper and deeper. Now, to what extent is that bliss experienced in his heart? Dear friends, let us understand that the experience of bliss is bestowed upon by the Supreme Divine Lord Himself from his infinite bliss reservoir. So how can there be an end or a limit to the experience of bliss? That bliss which the devotee experiences cannot be brought within limits. As the devotee increases his love, the divine's love constantly keeps evading him. This process goes on and on. Therefore, the experience of bliss through bhakti in the heart of the devotee is termed as Nijananda. It is the Lord's delight 
in the self being when one experiences nijananda the beauty is that his heart remains immersed in the pastimes of the supreme lord now he constantly revels in the company of the divine although he is performing all his worldly duties with great sincerity yet his mind is completely absorbed in the divine this is how he remains untouched by the blows and attacks of maya now a firm bond a very strong relation and a permanent one is established between him and the divine due to which he is unwavered by maya just as we see the flames of fire they rise in the upward direction and this is so because they constantly move upwards towards its source which is the sun just as take another example of the river water it constantly flows in the direction of the ocean which is its source similarly the love filled heart of the devotee who is experiencing nijanand constantly moves in the direction of the divine which is its source so this is the beauty of experiencing nijanand naraji beautifully explains this he says yaj gnyatva matto bhavati stavdo bhavati atma ramo bhavati knowing the supreme lord the devotee's heart becomes intoxicated with love it becomes silent and now it constantly starts reveling in the company of the divine lord such a blissful state is attained by him when he experiences nijananda so dear friends this is the charisma of experiencing nijanan and this is how we remain untouched by maya when we are on the path of bhakti so all said and done what then is the essence of bhakti the essence of bhakti lies in an unconditional surrender at the feet of the lord no doubt knowledge helps us know the divine but the extent of our knowledge depends on our surrender unto him one may be able to chant mantras and shlokas he may be able to cite histories he may have lakhs of followers as well and all these factors may sound very important to him yet dear friends all of these taken together will not be able to attain the supreme divine because they are not surrendered so until all these factors would be surrendered he will not be able to attain the supreme lord therefore the essence of bhakti lies in a total surrender at the feet of our beloved for his pleasure as shri krishna to in bhagavad gita says to arjun that o oh arjun for whom am i easily attainable he has said ananya chetah satatam yo ma smarati nitya shah tasyaham sulabah parth nitya yuktasya yoginah that for the one who is completely absorbed in me who is completely devoted unto me with such an exclusive devotion i am easily attainable for that devotee therefore my dear friends by chanting the names of the divine lord by contemplating upon his abode upon his form by reciting his glories by listening to his pastimes and constantly reveling in them our mind 
becomes completely absorbed in him. Its impurities disappear. Our heart melts and it flows in the direction of the Divine Lord. This is how exclusive devotion, Ananya Bhakti makes us one with the Lord. Dear friends, this is the great impact of Bhakti in the transformation of our life. With this, I end my say and I pray for all of you that may your life overflow with love filled devotion and may your heart remain ever united with the Supreme Lord. Now, to end my say, I shall chant a very small and a humble prayer at the feet of the Divine. Kya maangun Shri Raj Tum se kya maangun Kya maangun Shri Raj Tum se kya maangun Keval charan sharan me leje Keval charan sharan me लीजे श्रद्धा प्रेमा भक्ति दीजे श्रद्धा प्रेमा भक्ति दीजे जन्म जन्म के दुखियारी का पिया करो धनी करो कल्याण तुमसे kya mangu kya mangu shri kya mangu kya mangu shri raj tumse kya mangu boliye shri pranath pyare ki jai shri satguru maharaj ki jai Shri Krishna Kanhaya Lal Ki Jai Prem Pranam